Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 309 of the Spearhead Sunnies podcast. I'm here with uh, with an AI reproduction of Keelan. Hello. Uh, as, we, as, <laughs> as we all know, he is deceased. Um, you know, I, I've been getting up every day, and even if I'm not filming, uh, this is great, right, for anyone who's, who's had a Menti B recently, um, <laughs> a mental breakdown. Uh, <laughs> if... Uh, just dress nice every day, whatever that means to you. Just put a little bit of effort into your appearance. You look in the mirror and you go, "I'm sane." How could I? How could I have uh, been in, in a dark place for a few years? I did my hair. You know, it's good. It works, and I've been doing that every day. And uh, and and it. I know that it's really working. Because here's the thing: I think that the the key to defeat mental illness, it's not working on yourself. It's not going to therapy. It's not even taking antipsychotics. It's dressing well, okay? Because there's no such thing as an insane person that has a put-together outfit. <laughs> you know, Ted Bundy is a great example of this. All those women got in his car because that man could dress, okay? And that's what it's really all about is, uh, and, and I have evidence of this, all right? Uh, just yesterday... I was running late. I normally catch the bus there, which is very mentally ill. Um, but I uh, instead I was running late, so I got an Uber to therapy, oh. right? And I and I dressed up. And uh, normally, what I do because I don't want to have the awkward con. Because once I did it and I had the awkward conversation, uh, once I put in the address for just the the, the therapy place, and it has the name. Uh, and then I had a weird conversation about going to therapy with the Uber driver. Uh, and and let's be real, one star. When, with it's me, yeah, one star, bro. <laughs> when it comes to me, if we had a lovely conversation about the weather, one star. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I don't want to talk to the Uber driver. Uh, in fact, I've been really, really tossing up the, um, the ethical question of sh- should I uh, tell the Uber app that I'm deaf? Just to avoid the conversation. They used to have the option where you could say you'd prefer a silent ride. They That's, don't have that anymore. No, they, they – here's the thing. That was my favourite innovation in the Uber app and they, they're so smart. Fuck them. They gave it to everyone for free and now you can only get it in, in like the Uber X or the next more expensive oh, right. version. So if you want your Uber driver to shut the fuck up, that'll cost you $4. No. All right, I will just get in the car, put my ear pods in and say I'm traveling for business <laughs> instead to save myself $4. It's the principle. Um, and uh, so I get in and, and I had the, the weird conversation about therapy. So I thought I'm never putting in the address again. So I would put in the address next door to the place and it was just like a, a house. So all good. But this time I was running late. I put in the address. Uh, I just put it typed in the name of the place, and then I and then I hit go, and then I get in the car. And dude, I'm a, I I must have been killing it in the outfit department because I get in the car. The guy looks at the address of where we're going, and he goes, "You just going to work, are you?" <laughs> <laughs> and I went, "Yeah, just heading into work to look after these fucking crazy cunts in Frankston." I dressed like a therapist that day. That's hot for some people who, who have a terrible relationship with their parents. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but then on the way back, right, um, I, uh, I caught the bus back, which is just fucked. I'm in Frankston. I'm taking the bus. 29 years old. It's getting sad. Although <laughs> to a, I, I turned 30 in January, so I will be 30 years old on my L's. And by the way, my learner's permit has expired. I have to get, get it renewed. Mm. But to all, I know you might be inclined to be getting out there with your thumbs, all right, to write something abusive in the YouTube comment section or our new Spotify comment section. Mm. I bet, I'll tell you this, you wouldn't have wanted me on the roads when I was, when I was in the condition that I was. Honestly, could you imagine me the way that I was like a year ago and then being like, all right, I'm just going to get behind the wheel. (laughs) (laughs) I I think people would be taking my keys like you're too sleepy. The doctor told me uh, actually about eight months ago, he goes, uh, 
Blah, 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 normal appointment. He goes, oh, uh, I've been meaning to uh, tell you this. You're not driving, are you? <laughs> and I went, no. And he goes, good. Keep it that way. <laughs> and I wonder how long he meant to tell me that. <laughs> You know, like what if what if I he meant to tell me that eighteen months ago, and I had my license, I could have killed someone. Um, but anyway, now I have no excuse, and also uh, that none of everything that I've just said holds no water because I haven't been this sick for the whole time since I was sixteen. You know, mm. like uh, it's just my fault. Anyway, I'll get it at some point if I feel like it. Uh, I'm on the bus in Frankston. And not do nothing is more motivating to get your license than than if you if you're like 17 and you're you're not like doing your hours, jump on the train, come to Frankston, and take the bus anywhere. <laughs> You'll have your license in six months. I get on the bus and I get on there. Next to me is is a guy who's just wounded. <laughs> I'm sitting next to him, and uh, and he's just he's just bleeding. <laughs> and, and and what's really good about that is it wasn't it wasn't like saving Private Ryan wounded. Like oh my god, he was just sitting there on the bus, but he was also stabbed. Oh. Um, and then uh, but what was great was he was actually the 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 best passenger. Mm. on the bus other than me was the guy just sitting there calmly letting his life leak from him <laughs> up the back there's there's a, there's a junkie couple uh, who are who are absolutely smoking cigarettes I can smell it mm-hmm. uh, and um, and I, and I'm just sitting there going oh I had a long day fucking doing therapy sessions with all my patients and now I got to deal with these crazies <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> You know, one of the guys walked up to me and was like, how much do you charge for a session, doctor? Um, (laughs) uh, And so up the back of the bus, they're doing whatever the fuck they're doing. And the the thing about uh, Frankston bus drivers, all of my 15-year-old Frankston listeners will know what I'm talking about here. Everyone else doesn't live in Frankston or does and has their license Um, or is smart enough not to get on the fucking bus here. Uh, The bus drivers here, like, they don't take shit anymore. And, And they're... You never expect like the quiet guy with the heavy Indian accent to go shut the fuck up, but in Frankston they will. And and that's and that's the scariest type of person because that's a guy who never wanted to fight, never wanted to yell, but has gotten to that point by necessity and will fuck you up. Mm. Because because there's been 35 other opportunities where they didn't do that and they paid a heavy toll and they're like never again. I'll kill the next junkie who smokes on my bus. Sure enough, right, the, the smell of the cigarettes waft down towards me and then hits the bus driver. And he goes, get off my bus! He stops the thing in the middle of the fucking high, highway. He almost causes like a seven-car pileup, stops the bus, kicks them out on the highway. <laughs> but the only times I've ever seen someone getting removed from public transport in videos, in real life, whatever, they always go, get off my bus! at the next place where it's safe to do so. This guy was like, onto the highway, fuck <laughs> off. And so the, the junkie couple get off and he's like, and take your rubbish with you. I assume they left one of their kids there or something. <laughs> and uh, and they take like one can of, uh, of, of like Jim Beam off uh, the bus with him. And he goes, I know there's more behind the seat. They left it there, right? Uh, and that wasn't the end of it because after then, uh, two girls – get on, on the bus, two children, right? I don't know, They 16 max, right? They get on the bus and they sit up the back and and he just kicked off this this older, like 40-year-old junkie couple for smoking cigarettes. These two girl, girls get on and they immediately, immediately just start vaping. And he just starts off again and he can't stop again because he's on the highway and he goes, no fucking vaping on my bus. I don't care if you're a junkie. And then this girl goes... You fucking dog, you're going to call some a 13-year-old girl a junkie, you putrid cunt. <laughs> and I'm here going, wow, well, I am not trained in children's therapy. <laughs> and you fucking putrid cunt. And these two girls just start going off at this drive. What? There's nothing wrong with vaping on the bus anyway. And he goes, you can't fucking read the sign. Are you stupid? Have you ever been to school? And then the guy who's wounded gets up and goes, can I get off the bus, please? 
bus. And the guy's like, no, you can't get off the bus. I've already stopped on the highway. This dude's bleeding all over the floor. I'm sitting there going, this is the end of all of us. I'm, I'm leaving this plane of existence. Where the fuck is my license? Um... And then, and then these girls just start, they, they run up to the front of the bus, start abusing the bus driver while he's driving. He does some of these ones, <laughs> like shakes the wheel to make the girls like unsteady who then sit down. They're fucking vaping now in his face, yelling at him. He gets off, uh, he stops the bus and then he, and then uh, he's like, get off my bus. They're like, we're not getting off the fucking bus. We're going to Frankston station. Just take us there. How dare you call junkie, call us junkies. We're not fucking junkies. And then I, I really, really wanted to go. Go. I think he was talking about six years from now, but but they were thirteen, so I kept it in. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, they're having this huge screaming match, and uh, just coincidentally, he stopped the bus right at my stop, and I sat there for a good five minutes, going, oh, "I wonder how this is going to end." But then it became clear that this wasn't going to end for at least an hour and forty-five minutes. So I'm like, "All right, I'll get off the bus." Uh, and then me and the w- wounded man walked uh, walked down to KFC together, um, and he and he's like, Are "You hungry? I'm gonna I'm gonna go in and get KFC." And I went, oh, "I can't I can't chew." And he goes, "Ah, oh, yeah, I get it." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was like, "Ah, oh, that man can't afford dental care." Um, we're, we're on we we both can't chew for opposite we're on opposite ends of the of the dental care spectrum, uh, but we both can't chew. I can't chew because I've had a lot of dental care. He can't chew because he's had none. Uh, and and you know that that I don't know what my point is there. Um, dental care should be on uh, on uh, covered by the government. Maybe did you tap on? No. They don't make you tap on on the buses in Frankston. No, they really don't. And also, it's it it's fucking too hard because if you don't have money on your thing, like you can't top up there. The bus driver doesn't do it anymore. Like the none of the bus drivers are like uh, this. Is a man. When's the last time you heard two a uh, uh, twenty five year old plus men talk about? <laughs> The intricacies of, of paying for public transport. This is this is like the this is the only podcast where you're gonna get. You know what's weird about taking the bus? Also, I'm 29. Uh, they don't. You know, so many times I don't have money on my on my on my thing, and I go, "Oh, can I pay for it?" And they go, "No, nah, don't worry about it." I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool. I'll just blame it on that guy if I get fined." Um. Anyway, as those girls said, "What a fucking putrid dog." That's such a Frankston word, putrid. You never really hear that. That's exclusively like Frankston and then you hear it a little bit uh, in Western Sydney, you fucking putrid dog. That's a really good one. Um, but, yeah, they, you fucking putrid dog. And he goes, I'm calling the police. And then the two 13-year-old girls, oh, not the jacks, bro. And then I was like, that's enough. I'm the, getting off. The jacks. The, oh, the jacks. The jacks are coming. I heard, that. I heard one of the 13-year-old goes, girl goes, oh, the jacks again. And I just, I just thought, oh, Frankston's great because it is gentrifying very quickly. But those girls are gonna, you know, like if you like, all these people are so angry about housing prices, the housing market. Mm. That that those girls are ensuring that that housing affordability stays where it is in Frankston. Yeah, because a lot of developers are coming in. They're trying to build high rises. But these Fra- these Frankston thirteen year old girls who are going to call the bus driver putrid vape on the bus and then and then punch on with the cops when they get there, that's taken at least twenty thousand dollars off the homes in the in the surrounding area. So that's a good thing, I say. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, that's uh, that's good. Uh, I a lot of people have been asking me about this. I forgot to talk about it last episode. Before I went away for my surgery. I I had this idea and I really wanted to try and make the surgeon laugh just before I went under. Because the first surgery I had, I'm on the table, just like the, the movies or the TV series shows that you watch. Surgeon's head is floating over me and he goes, all right, I want you to count to 10. I got to four and then I passed out. That's the last thing I remember, right? So I was thinking that was going to happen again. So I thought, man, how funny would it be to just try and make the surgeon laugh and then go out like that? Right, so I was thinking, what's the what's the one sentence that I could say? Because I've got about four seconds, maybe five, if I really fight the anaesthetic to get a joke out. And and I I thought, you know, surgeon's head is hovering over me. If I just bust it out, uh, how long until a girl can sit on my face? That's going to crack the surgeon, surely. 
So I go in and, and this is my plan. Okay. But before I went in, this happened. I am, when you go in for a surgery, you, they, they sit you in the, ta- in, in, in the, in a hospital bed, they get you, take your clothes off. They put a robe on you. And then the nurses just kind of prep you. They go, what are you in for? Blah, blah, blah. They're just kind of making sure that you know what's going to happen. You've consented to everything and you know the process. Then the anesthetist comes in and he explains anything you might need to know, ask you your height and weight so he doesn't accidentally kill you. And I, I mean, I've only had surgery twice, but every conversation I've had with the anesthetist strikes me as un- unusually long because I am unusually long, right? I'm really tall, so I've got a really big body but I don't weigh much. So I've got a really small body. So the anesthetist, I get the feeling, has a look at my chart with all of my information on it. And he just goes, that can't be right. (laughs) Especially the first surgery, because I was struggling eating because my mouth was so small and I was so sick and I had the braces and everything on. And then I had the expander fitted. I lost a bunch of weight before I went in. So I was, he would look at this chart and seen six foot eight, Uh, And I think at the time I was 75 kilos, like something fucked. And he would have seen that and gone, that's not what a human looks like. No way. (laughs) Comes in to see me and he goes, "Uh, so what's your height? I'm like six, eight. He goes, how much do you weigh? 75. And he went, and then he looks at me and then he's chart. He goes, oh, (laughs) like, oh, that is true. So that happened again. I weighed a little bit more. I think I weighed like 80, but not much more. So surgeon's still confused. Uh, Anethetist is still confused. Anethetist comes in, he talks to me and he goes, uh, uh, all right, so here's what we're going to do. Blah, 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 blah. Here's what's happening. I asked him a few questions. He answered them. He was really good. And then he goes, um, also, just so you're aware, um, what we're going to have to do is uh, just before the end of the surgery, we're going to have to wake you up. <laughs> and I went, what? And he goes, we just need your help to remove the breathing tube because it's going to go in your nose and down your throat and we can get it in without your help. But to get it out, because we've moved everything and you'll have your new chin and you're just about to be sewn up, we're going to have to wake you up and then you're going to help us by sitting up and he explained this whole situation and then I'm going to pull it out and you're going to feel it come out and uh, and and uh, don't worry, there won't be any mirrors so you won't see your face. <laughs> And uh, and we just need your help. So here's what, and he explained it to me three times, probably because they were going to put me under, and then and then wake me up, and then maybe I would have forgotten the instructions. And he goes, "Can you do that for me?" And I went, "Yeah, I guess I can. I mean, I, I don't have any choice." And he goes, you, "We need your help with this." I'm like, "Okay." And and then and then I go, "Is it going to hurt?" And he goes, "Yes, <laughs> but don't worry." After, I'm going to give you something and you're going to forget it. I don't remember it at all. <laughs> I don't remember. I went, I went to sleep and then I woke up in a hospital bed in a different part of the hospital. That's all I remember. And that's so fucking terrifying that he goes, don't worry, we'll give you something and you won't remember it at all. Isn't that weird? That's so weird. So he told me all of that and then I was like, then I became nervous because I wasn't really nervous about it at all, really. I was a little bit like, oh, yeah, recovery is going to suck, but I wasn't scared about the actual surgery. But then he told me that, and then I was like, fuck. Then across the the, the hospital room from me, there's there's a father there with his son who's recovering from – it looks like he broke his arm or something, something not serious. The dad, he's like 40-something, he comes over to me after the anesthetist left, and he goes, you're in for uh, jaw surgery, I heard. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, is it uh, MMA, like maxillomandibular expansion? And I went, yeah, it is. And he goes, I had that 15 years ago. And I went, oh, great. And he goes, don't worry about it, man. It's it's not as bad as it sounds and the recovery's not so bad. And I went, oh, wow, so you you had it done. And he goes, yeah, um, the, and don't worry, it's totally fine. I mean, uh, they they wired me shut um, and, and then I vomited and then I almost died. Uh, I had to get the nurses to kind of cut me out. Like the as soon as I woke up, I almost died. And as he's telling me this, even he is going, why am I saying this? Like he came over to make me feel better. And he goes, so don't worry, man. I mean, I almost died a couple of times, but don't worry, you'll be fine. And I was like, oh, fuck, man. That sounds horrible. And he goes, yeah, don't worry, though. I was okay. And I was like, 
Was recovery okay? And he goes, yeah, it was totally fine. I mean, they had to do the surgery again. <laughs> And then he goes, oh, uh, I mean, but you know, I'm sure that won't happen with you. Well, it, ha- it happened with me. They had to do it again. I, I got a really bad infection and then and then my jaw recessed and my, they, we had to do it again for the second time. And then, I, and, then, and then for the recovery for the next one, I started vomiting and I almost drowned again. And I just wanted to go, can you fuck off now, please? <laughs> so I, I just had the nurses, the doctor, the anaesthetist come in and really assure me. And then this guy was like, oh, man, here's how I almost died like three times getting that surgery. And he was like, I don't know why I'm telling you this. And then he, and then afterwards, after he goes, oh, yeah, we had to d- get it again because there were a lot of complications. And then he just was like, uh... Uh, anyway, man, good luck. And just walked away. And I was like, oh, I feel so much worse. But I still had my joke to tell. So I'm thinking, if I can make the surgeon laugh, then I'll be all right. I go in and I do everything, blah, blah, blah. And then they, 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 I get all the way through the process and, and, uh, and, and, and he wasn't there. Wasn't there this time, so... Just didn't, just didn't get to, <laughs> oh, didn't get to tell my joke. But at least I, I woke up midway through the surgery and helped them remove my breathing tube. Apparently, <laughs> you know what I would have loved to, love to do. I, 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 I wish I could have filmed it, the actual surgery, and then, and I just chuck it on Patreon for a laugh. You know, that's the, and that's, and that's the type. Those are the ideas that I'm starting to have now that I'm healthy. The next time I get an intensive surgery, we'll stream it. Uh, Ten bucks of you. Although I bet some people are into that. I wouldn't want them. I don't know. You know they take your bottom lip and they bring it all the way down to your Adam's apple. <laughs> uh, Kill and fucking hates whenever I talk uh, anything remotely about the surgery. It's really good. Oh, I'm sorry that you had to go through that, man. <laughs> Um, Speaking of Patreon, support the show. Uh, We're putting a lot of effort into Patreon-only episodes. Uh, I've been putting up uh, podcasts and YouTube videos uh, early on Patreon, and we're using all of the money to... uh, uh, It basically just goes into groceries and then into the content, and that's that's it because that's my only source of income. Is uh, Before... When things were going a little bit better, I'd be like, 100% of your money goes straight into the production. And that was true. No longer. A lot of your money does go to Coles. <laughs> Actually, not Coles, Woolworths. We do Woolies. So um, if you if you ch- if you chip in a couple of bucks, you know, that'll be like, um, that might be like, like uh, you know, a couple litres of milk for me. And, and without milk, there would be no podcast. So thank you very much for your support. Uh, you get a Discord, ac- a Discord access and everything. You know what? How about this? Uh, this week... Um, every morning in Discord, I'll post my breakfast uh, that you guys paid for, and I'll just tell you a little bit about what I'm eating <laughs> and and how much of the Patreon support went went towards that. That's my guarantee. Check out the Patreon right now. Um, all right, what's been happening here? Uh, we're going to get into later in the episode. We talked about uh, jobs that d- deserve disrespect. We got a lot of good. Um, we got a lot of good suggestions and stories for them that I like. A lot of bad ones as well uh, that we'll get into, but. Um, I wanted to get into first Sniper Wolf, mm. the uh, the react the the premium reactor. This uh, if you don't know who she is, she's a a woman who uploads every single day. Like say say what you like about her, she, bitch works hard. She's a hard worker. She's consistent, more consistent than I would e- ever have been and would ever want to be. Um, she's really good, but. She uh, has been rightfully accused of just stealing a shitload of content. Everything that she reacts to, she's just reacting to TikToks or viral videos and and adding absolutely zero commentary. She'll even do videos where she just reads tweets word for word and then laughs and then moves on. Her audience is like, I really get the vibe that her audience is like between the ages of 8 and 13 to 14 um, so like those girls that were calling the bus driver a putrid cunt, like that's a sniper wolf audience. And then, and then like just foreign, foreign language speaking people who are just learning enough English to understand the concept of, uh, of the language. Like that's what it is. And also those people are 13. Uh, <laughs> um, but she steals all of her content. She doesn't credit creators. And, uh, a quick recap is a, a big YouTuber called Jack's films has been, 
uh, has started an entire channel because her name is Sniper Wolf with three S's. His new channel's name is J Jacks Films, three J's. And he just reacts to her reacting to other content, making fun of her, but also crediting the creators like she does not. And he's been doing this with great success. Very funny. It's just parody. And she showed up at his house. <laughs> She shows up at his house, uh, filming his house, live streaming on Instagram. She has 5 million followers outside of his fucking home at night and didn't seem to see the issue with it, posts it, and then obviously everyone loses their shit. She's fully doxxed this guy, posted his address online to her 5 million followers. He's freaking out about it. And uh, everyone's like, hey, this is like such a violation of YouTube's terms of service. You need to do something about this. He's calling for a channel to be taken off. Other people are calling for her to be deleted from the website. All of this nonsense. She's bragging about it the next day, posting photos with her sister going, we show up at your house, what do you do? Like just not being scared of repercussions at all, which is really interesting. And it's especially messy because she was like a keynote speaker uh, at YouTube's recent like conference talking like she was YouTube had selected her as like this is the model YouTuber like if you want to make basically which basically means this woman is making us the most money and causing the least controversy for our website you should be like her uh, because she would be she would be printing tens of thousands of dollars per video. They're long. They get millions of views. Like she'd probably be making $10,000 a video. She's uploading every day. Then she has a giant backlog. She's making fucking millions. And if she's making millions, that means YouTube is because you split the ads 50, 50, right? So she's like the, the YouTuber that they want you to be like, that they're making heaps of money from that is controversy free. And she's showing up at YouTubers houses in violation of the docs policy. And there's this whole thing of like, I think there's there's like almost a sexism element to it. Imagine if a man showed up to a woman's house, mm. like it would be headline news everywhere. Out, right now, outside of YouTube, no one really gives a fuck about this. Like your mom's not going to talk to you about it. But if it was a dude doing it to a girl, your mom would be like, did you hear about the YouTuber that showed up? What's you, like, it would be a huge thing. But- that's happened and that's the quick recap and that's all kind of old news. <clears throat> now, because of all the pressure, YouTube has come out and they've gone, we've temporarily suspended monetization on Sniper Wolf's channel, which is a good move, I guess, right? But it's also, it's not really a punishment because she has other channels that people are saying that is, are still monetized. So she had all these videos, then she just started uploading them to secondary channels. Mm -hmm. She's making, you know, maybe a little bit less money and a temporary suspension is doesn't really mean much and it's also like if any other creator did that they their channel would be fucking nuked so it is like the the ultimate and very obvious fucking reality that there are the rules don't apply as much if you're the more money that you're making like that is just how it works great example is this channel i haven't had a monetized episode of the podcast i don't know eight months, probably even more. I think there's like, I honestly think in the last year of episodes when well, there haven't been that many, but <clears throat> they've all been demonetized. Every single one of them. I couldn't tell you the last one that went green. Um, and that's just how it is. Cause I swear too much or, and I talk about things that YouTube deem as controversial. It's really weird. It's really frustrating. We make about 15 cents an episode uh, in ad revenue on these podcasts, which is fucking awesome. I think my last month's revenue was about $4. <laughs> I'll tell, you, um, I'll tell you, I'll find out what the last episode that monet was monetized. Okay, excellent. And then and then and then tell me the next one after that. <laughs> uh so yeah, so she's done that and they've temporarily demonetized it. The latest update is she's taking a break from YouTube. Okay, so you the, found it? the last episode monetized yeah. was episode two hundred and eighty six <laughs> on eighteenth of September two thousand twenty two. <laughs> so Fuck! So like a year ago, mm. that, that was the last time. And and that monetized one, how much money did that one make? I don't have permissions to see that. Okay, well, as you shouldn't, because you would see the amount, the, the huge amount of money that I'm making. <laughs> I'll look it up. Which episode was it? 286. 286. The All return right. of Keelan and Rosie's last episode. Sorry, guys, give me 10 minutes to scroll back. <laughs> 286. Oh, here we go. Um... 
I made, <clears throat> let's see, big cash. See, when people tell you like, oh, what's it like being a YouTuber? You must be making so much money. Yeah, yeah, man. $11.55. <laughs> that's, wow. I mean, what is that? That's fucking, that's about six, seven liters of milk. That's really good. Nah, milk's like three bucks now. A liter? No, it's not. Oh, a liter. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, it's not. Yeah. It's like a dollar sixty. See? <laughs> I'm still in touch. Okay. That wasn't that wasn't the Bill Gates moment that you were you were hoping, was it? How much is a is a is a is a pint of milk? I couldn't tell you that, but I could tell you how much for four liters of blood from a child. Um <laughs> I only thought it was like three bucks because I buy my milk sometimes and it's five dollars when you get the three liters. Man, it's so fucked and you should be stealing from the supermarket every opportunity you get. Um right, so that the latest update is uh Snowwolf is uh taking a break from YouTube. And uh this is this is why like the temporary suspension of monetization, it's not a punishment at all because you just take a break until it's back, you know? So she's gone. Please remember that in spite of our differences, different opinions, mistakes, we all struggle to do the best we can and nobody is unaffected by hate, insecurity and the pain that it causes. I'm taking a step back, reflecting, learning, turning off the comments for a bit and focusing on my own mental health that has been on a steep decline for the past year. Videos have been extremely difficult to film for the past few months, so thank you for being patient with me. You never know what struggles people are going through, so please be kind and please try to remember I am human and I have feelings just like you. And that's a really funny statement from someone who showed up at someone else's house at night. <laughs> like I've been going through a steep mental decline. Yeah, because you showed up at someone's house at night. Like that's not something that someone mentally sane does. And what's... uh. You know what's like, I'm seeing a lot of, like, I guarantee you the next wave of videos about this from all these YouTubers are going to be, oh, she's just going on a holiday. She doesn't care about this. This is a bullshit statement. Uh, no, I, I believe her a hundred percent. She's struggling because this is the, the, this is the type of person, the content that she's been making has been shit that elicits zero comments on anything. And I'm, I'm, it will get a lot of comments, but I'm talking about zero. It says nothing. Like you're doing a video where someone falls over and you go, ha, 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 he fell over. And then the next one is someone doing their makeup bad and they go, oh, that would look bad on me. I'm glad I didn't have my makeup done like that. And then the comments are like, oh, great video. The guy fell over and the makeup was bad. <laughs> now people are like, hey, bitch, you can't show up at people's houses. Oh, stop perceiving me. Stop looking at me and my actions. I don't want to be known as a human being who has anything other than a smile after someone else's video. This is a woman's first experience being perceived <laughs> and she doesn't like it. What do you mean you don't think that I'm perfect? Stop trying to, don't look at me, look at my videos. They say nothing, they are nothing. She wants to go back to being a void. And that's the um, that's the reality of when you when you put yourself out on social media, you you know people go, hey, I I don't really like it when you make mistakes. That's that's the job that you have. That's the trade off for for not doing fucking bricklaying in the summer. You know, that's why I I always am like, I always get so annoyed at YouTubers that are like, oh man, videos have been so hard to film recently. They were actually never hard. They were never, I, 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 this is someone who I've been, I did this for two years with a crippling fucking illness and metal in my mouth. And it still was less hard than when I was healthy and I worked in a call center. <laughs> like it's not, this is not a hard job. You, you need skill. You need to be technically skilled and it's difficult to get those skills, but it's not hard. Okay, I've done hard jobs. I've done laboring on building sites. I used to work in the back of a butcher. I've done call center jobs. I've done corporate jobs. I've done sales. That shit is soul destroying and body destroying, right? This is like, oh, it's, oh, I have to sit in front of the computer and watch a compilation of videos of like children falling down on playground equipment. But I feel sad because people didn't like it when I showed up unannounced at a stranger's home. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I have a lot of sympathy for you. Fuck. 
I swear to God, all of these YouTubers that are struggling with their mental health, they would they would feel so much better if you just put them in any job you could think of for four months. They would go, oh, this, this is a mental health problem. <laughs> I don't know. I just, it's, I, I obviously, right, I never want to see people struggling and I never want to see people going through stuff. But if, if, if I had to pick someone, it would be a YouTuber. <laughs> Like, fuck, man, this is such an easy job. What are you doing right now? <laughs> Sitting. <laughs> and looking at the whiteboard. Yeah, and, and every now and then he laughs. <laughs> Although, in Keeler's defence, the hard part of his job right now is that I'm not paying you. <laughs> so, so I guess, you know what? But that's the fucking thing. I'm sitting here, neither of us are making any fucking money. And I'm like, yeah, shut up, millionaire. Yeah. Oh, I'm sad. The videos are hard. Well, take a break then. Go on a holiday. <laughs> Fuck. A I saw a video of a teacher getting curb stomped by a 16-year-old kid because she took his fucking Nintendo away. His DS or whatever the fuck it was, unimportant. <laughs> she she was in a coma. Oh. <laughs> That's a hard job. Right? Sitting in front of a fucking I don't know, a camera that you that that has that you didn't even Bro, I used to have to focus my camera. You don't even have to do that anymore. It's autofocus. <laughs> if you're not focusing the fucking camera, your job's not hard. Although we did do manual focus on this, so mm. I might need a mental health break. Well, you've got, I, I do it for you, so it is automatic. Yeah, all right. See, shut the fuck up. <laughs> this, like, this is not, oh, I have to sit down in, in the red chair and do and talk for an hour. Oh, woe is me. I might Uber Eats coffee. <laughs> oh, I need a break. Videos have been so hard to film recently. <laughs> They've never been hard. You know, the only person standing in front of a camera filming that has a hard job are all of those 9 out of 10 women that are in Gaza right now wearing a fucking UN helmet, all right? That's a hard job. That's a fucking hard job. Oh, fuck rockets. I hope the Iron Dome works. Videos have been so hard to film recently. That's a difficult job. But they're, but they're not. I wouldn't call them YouTubers. <laughs> That's got to be my favorite genre of reporter is is like it seems to be like a very conscious choice now because if you go to the 70s and the 80s and you look at war reporting it's always like rugged dudes that have the that are that are brave enough to go into the war zone and their bosses are like dude I can't believe you're going now it's like the the you know fucking Rupert Murdoch who owns Fox he goes give me give me a, a list of the 100 hottest females that work in our news organizations. I don't care if they film. I don't care if they clean the toilets. We're sending them to the front lines. And then they just have like this beautiful woman who really should be, who really should be vlogging. <laughs> like she should be filming herself uh, as she drives in a Tesla, no seatbelt. Her eyes are not on the road. They're looking at the camera. Like that's the job that she should be doing. But instead they've got her in a fucking war zone. Rockets are flying overhead. Why do they do that? That's interesting. Is that propaganda? It probably is. They don't get paid very much for it either. They should get paid a lot. They don't get that, like, risk money. Why does a miner from Perth get hazard pay, but the woman with rockets flying overhead not? Doesn't make sense to me. Unless, you know what? How about this? Let's go full QAnon. It's a green screen. <laughs> Gaza isn't even real. Has anyone been there? I haven't. You know how I know I'm not that famous? <laughs> you know how I know I'm not that famous? Because no one has been saying that I've been replaced by a clone. Mm. No one said that. Kanye gets that all the time. And you know what's crazy? We had the same surgery. His was because he got into a car accident, but he had jaw reconstruction surgery. And you see now all the time, right, the photos of him before the jaw surgery, his face was a lot slimmer. And after his his jawline, the bottom half especially, got a lot wider. And you see all of these QAnon people going, he was replaced by a clone. 
This is clearly not Kanye. Look at photos of him from before the major facial reconstruction surgery he got. He looks different. Need I say more? So I'm not that famous. Everyone just believes me. That's that's that that that's the comfortable version of like known, right? Where when I tell you something happens, pretty much everyone believes me. Mm. Like if I was a double A plus celebrity and I said oh, I'm going in for jaw surgery to fix my breathing, everyone would go, that's cosmetic. Everyone. Like Zach Efron, right? He is like, I was running around in my house and the tiles were wet and I smashed my face on a water fountain. People were like, nah, you just got cosmetic surgery. Nah, dude. He smashed his fucking head on the on the on the water fountain. Anyway, what was I saying? Gaz is not real. Keelan wrote that one down. <laughs> um Oh, that's right. The the how, how long have we been going for here? Oh, 40 minutes. Okay, fuck. We got to do miscellaneous bit at the end, but I really want to get into what? This is a passion project is what I was trying to say okay. before. What this, is? Uh, this, the show. This podcast. Yeah, because Keelan's actually making a lot of money, or not heaps, but you're making decent money doing yeah. podcasts for other people. Yeah. Much more than he's ever made for Spearhead Sundays. Yeah. This is like... This is the definition of a podcast that is a passion project. Yeah, this is like uh, when the chef comes home and is like, fuck it, I'm making a souffle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's good. Or or more likely when the chef come, comes home and is like, fuck it, I'm getting McDonald's. <laughs> that, that's this show. I can't be fuck cooking at home. I put effort into my other podcast. I'm just going to sit here and, and tell Lewis to say that Gaz is not real. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> What? It's your idea. <laughs> um, he, that was 100% my idea. Oh, you know what happened to me? I'm sorry to be, keep talking about all this health stuff, but this <laughs> this happened to me at my last... Have I told you about my last appointment at the orthodontist? No. So I go in, right? And I haven't been in for... I, I go in every like four to six weeks, usually to change the wire to a thicker wire. The thicker, wi the, the, thicker the wire is, the more tension it pushes on your teeth. So once you get up to the thickest wire, that's when your teeth are nice and then your braces come off. So I've been told that my braces are coming off around March and April, right? So I'm just going in for routine. Every six weeks, they have a look. They make sure everything's looking nice, blah, blah, blah. This is my first one since the surgery where I can open my mouth properly. And they told me, oh, we're just going to fix one of the brackets because it came off after the surgery. I get in there, I sit in the chair and the author goes, all right, so you've got a really big appointment. Did you know that? I went, uh, I thought I was just getting a bracket done. He goes, oh yeah, you're getting a bracket done, but we're also going to do some teeth filing. And I went, what is that? And he goes, oh, uh, uh. Uh, what we'll do is, how about this? I'll do everything else first and then I'll tell you about it. So I'm like, well, that makes me feel way worse. Because he was like, I don't want you sitting for the first 30 minutes of the appointment thinking about what I'm going to get to. So I just won't tell you anything about it and let you fucking sit there and sweat. And sweat I did. He's in my mouth changing the brackets. They changed the wire. The bone underneath my nose and above my teeth is still really soft. So it really fucking hurts. I'm sorry, Keelan. Is this a bit much for you? <laughs> is this, is, you, don't like, you don't like hearing about this? I don't like hearing about it. What about the bit where he pushed on this <laughs> tooth and I felt my whole upper jawbone bend a little bit? Like a skipping rope mm. under tension. It was really skipping painful. Rope. Really painful. Anyway, they do all of that. And then he goes, and then he goes, all right, now I'm going to tell you about teeth filing. And I go, what, what, what is like, what do you do? And he goes, oh, <clears throat> what we need to do is because the shape of your front teeth, uh, they're more like triangles, like upside down triangles. So thicker on the bottom, thinner on top. So those teeth will never be able to touch like flat, like you see on nice Hollywood smiles. So what they're doing is they're touching at the bottom, uh, but not at the top. So there's a, there was a little triangle uh, in the top of my teeth, uh, left over from the gap tooth that I had. And I was told that was just going to be whatever it is. Sometimes I'll get one piece of rice stuck in it and then it would look like I had perfect teeth. <laughs> and I was like, whatever, that's, that's fine. As long as I can breathe, I don't care. But this author was like, what I'm going to do is I'm going to file in between the two teeth on the bottom so that then they're nice and straight and they touch. And I went, oh, cool. How do you do that? And he goes, oh, sandpaper. <laughs> I thought he would have like, I don't know, some kind of tool. He goes, oh, I just sandpaper and a drill. I'm like, okay, cool, from Bunnings. Uh, and that made him laugh. Uh, but then he didn't say no, so that made me scared. 
Um, anyway, he does it. Doesn't hurt at all. It just doesn't hurt at all. And now look at my teeth. They touch. Huh. Isn't that pretty? And they and uh, and I and they go, what color wire? What color rubber would you like? I'm like, oh, they finally asked me because I'm an adult male. They would never ask me what color. Uh, and they finally asked me, they, what color would you like? And I'm like, do you have pink? And they go, we do. I'm like, great, I got pink. Oh, nice. And that'll be my my last my uh, my last piece of rubber will be colored. Finally, I really really wanted, and I asked for this straight away. I really wanted the gems. Remember when you were 12 and everyone had braces and some of the kids would have like green and mm. per- and the girls would have purple ones? Mine are all silver. I wanted them. They only come in children's sizes. Bullshit. But also probably for the best. You know, there's, there's one thing to be an adult with braces. There's another one to have like pink and green and purple. It would look like I'm trying to break into a primary school. Um but that's another thing, right? Here's the last thing that he had to do is because he was changing my wire, it was so fucking painful. But it wasn't from when he started doing the bottom teeth, it wasn't painful on my teeth where it normally is when you get your wire changed. It was painful like all the way down into the back of my face and my neck. It was like this strange nerve pain. And um and I couldn't work it out. Because he would touch me like the front of my bottom teeth and then all down the left side of my face and neck it would be like a electricity of pain, really hurtful. And uh, it was, it sucked and it was really painful, but it was really interesting to me because I'm like, I was like, oh, what's going on? Like, I know he's not touching there. Why does it hurt? It must be something to do with my nerves, which were moved during the surgery. So... Uh, I wanted to ask him, hey, why is why is that happening? Like, why is it every time you touch my tooth on this side, the left side of my face hurts? But instead, because uh, his fingers were in my mouth and it was so painful, I instead said, what are you doing? <laughs> I went, what are you doing? And then he was like, oh, I'm just, he got really offended. I was like, what the fuck are you doing, you amateur? And I didn't mean it like that. But then he just starts talking really fast with his fingers in my mouth. I couldn't go, oh, I'm sorry. I meant like, I didn't, like, what's ha- Like, when you do that, I feel pain here. What is that? I instead went, what are you doing? And he went, oh, I'm just doing your fucking... <laughs> we got into this weird argument. He's like, well, it's just because when I touch here, it's called referred pain. Well, your nerves, they don't know where you are, where they are. So that's why you feel this pain. It's common after surgeries. And he was really short and sharp with me. And then I was, and then I was like, oh, what a dick. But really, it was just me being a fucking asshole going, what are you doing? <laughs> Ow! Stop! <laughs> like a fucking baby, you know? Oh, my God. And I could tell the nurse just wanted to be like, hey, man, we saw a 12-year-old girl here before you, and she she handled this a lot better than you did, you fucking <laughs> sook. <laughs> Spits in my mouth. Some people would pay extra for that. Um, I shouldn't make these jokes. I have to see them until March. Oh, actually, then they go, oh, you might get them off in December. So I could start 2024 with new teeth, which is a real bummer because uh, I'm, I'm not making any money at the moment, uh, but I, pr- I hopefully will be by April. I thought it would be so funny. Like, how good's this idea? And I might do it, but it would be, it's a very expensive, it's a very stupid, expensive idea that I almost regret saying right now, but fuck it, it's really funny. I think that it would be so funny to, as a video, the first third of the video is me getting my braces off. Then I immediately go to a jeweler and I get grills. Like gold. (laughs) Gold grills. And I swap the braces out for grills. That's funny as fuck. I got my braces off, but I missed the metal. I've got grills. How about this? If I still think the, the the idea is really funny, but I'm not making, making very much money, uh, it, they'll be silver. You don't think that's funny? That's pretty funny. Uh, yeah, but not but not funny enough to spend eight thousand dollars on gold grills. Nah. What about like fifteen hundred on silver grills? You think it would be a lot nicer for me to just have my normal teeth? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. How about this? $150,000 full diamond. Okay. Yeah, I could get around that. Yeah, okay, good. I'll do that. But before um, you do that, can you yeah. start paying me for this podcast? Uh, 
if how about this? If while doing the podcast, one of the diamonds fall out and you're quick enough to pick it up <laughs> off the floor, you can keep it yeah. and sell it. Great. Good. Should we do the jobs thing now? Yeah, we should. So last episode, um, by the way, we're, we've got video on Spotify if uh, if anyone wants to listen to watch the video for some reason. <laughs> we Look, okay, maybe we'll edit that out. Yeah, yeah all right. Well, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> Guys, we edited something out <laughs> that I should not have said. Guys, uh, we've got video on Spotify. Um, and we, Anyway, so jobs that we shouldn't respect. Uh <laughs> Firstly, podcasters. Secondly, uh, I talked about this last week uh, and we were talking about uh, just jobs that not only should we not respect, because there are a few jobs that we, that there are jobs that we should respect. Nurses, doctors, healthcare workers, especially comedians, obviously on top. Um, but there are jobs that should, that deserve to be disrespected if you ever see them doing it. This is after I saw uh, ticket inspectors fine a pensioner and then like a, a, a like a clearly broke uni student, right? They should be disrespected. And what I did was after regretting not saying anything when they find the senior citizen and she cried, when I saw them find the student, I said, great job, guys, to their face. And that's the, like, don't, uh, don't abuse them. Just go, wow. Good job. Great work, guys. Keep it up. Keelan, you saw um, a parking inspector uh, finding someone at a hospital. And the what did you do? section. And I told him he has no soul. <laughs> Please say the full sentence. <laughs> hey, brother, you have no soul. Something like that. I, I don't remember. <laughs> For some reason, putting hey, brother at the front is really good. Yeah. Because he probably goes... <laughs> He, hey, he, brother, <laughs> you have no soul. Dude, he's going to think about that in the shower yeah. for the next 30 years of his sad life, and he deserves it. So I asked other people, listeners of the show, to email the show, podcast at loosebeers.com. You can also leave a comment on the episode on YouTube or on Spotify, what jobs deserve disrespect. Uh, and we got a few um, a few uh, <coughs> uh, ones. We got This is a great one, editors. <laughs> That's that's really good. Um, <laughs> and uh, what else do we have? This this is a really good one. That was me. Um, this is a really good one. Politicians. Yeah. That's good. I, I, I would say, I don't know if I would say all politicians deserve disrespect, but I would say that that we shouldn't like any politicians. This has been a long-held belief of mine. If you like a politician, you're wrong. We shouldn't like any of them. They should be people that are like, all right, you're allowed to be here for now. Like that's the highest level of respect a politician should get is, all right, I'll believe it when I see it. And then if they don't do it, you fucking vote them out. How about this? I reckon Hitler would have had to be one of the most loved politicians. Mm. When is a politician being universally liked not ended in a dictatorship? <laughs> I don't think there's ever been one. I mean, over in North Korea, they love their boy. They love that chubby little fuck. They love him, all right? And look where it's got them, you know? <laughs> Shot in the street. Uh, here's a great one. Investment property owners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you own an apartment building, fuck you. Oh, yeah, like Airbnb owners as well. Disgusting. I stayed in one the other day. It was pretty cheap, to be honest. It was like $175 a, a night in Canberra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but $20 there's cameras in the roof. If you're paying less than $200 a night, they, there's a camera in the toilet. Yeah, there's, there's $20 extra to park in like their dedicated parking zone. Oh, shut up. And their $60 cleaning fees. Yeah. Fuck you. Get a job. So I shaved my chest in the shower <laughs> and clogged the seat. <laughs> <laughs> With your chest hair? Yeah. Good. I, I have like a hairy that. chest. Yeah, good. Any 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 fellas listening out there with a with a like if if your name is if your last name is like Patrizio or something, <laughs> shave your chest in an Airbnb. And then I Absolutely. I told you about this. Uh, out of the shower, I didn't like dry off with a towel, I just walked around. Good. To just damage the floor. If you're going to charge me a cleaning fee, I'm going to make the most of it. Absolutely. For sure. The last Airbnb my girl and I stayed at, we uh, we don't smoke, we don't drink, right? Neither of us do. We stayed in an Airbnb. Now, we didn't notice this. 
the previous guest taped up the smoke detector with a plastic bag because they must have been smoking weed or smoking cigarettes in the Airbnb. We don't do that because we don't smoke, so we don't look for the fucking smoke detector like an animal. <laughs> All right? We don't we we care about a smoke detector only slightly more than your average African American person. Okay? Because we will change the battery, <laughs> but we won't cover it with a plastic bag and tape. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Spirit Sundays is back. That's really funny. Uh, <laughs> you know, actually, just today, the smoke, uh, literally this morning, that's why I thought of it, the smoke detector was beeping, low battery beep, already changed it because I am white. But I woke up of to the sound of it going beep, and I thought, am I in an amateur pornography on Pornhub? <laughs> where, where am I? Who's going to be holding their phone vertically really shaky? It's an Android and fuck it. Um, Family guy on in the background. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Peter. Ooh, beep. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> po- podcasters deserve more respect. This is really funny, funny shit. You're not going to get this anywhere else. Uh, support the show on Patreon. We'll play one of the videos. We definitely won't. <laughs> we won't. Um, this one is wrong. Uber Eats drivers, what are you talking about? They deserve more respect than most people. I won't tip them. Um, but they deserve a lot of respect. I'm not tipping them because the minute we start tipping them in this country, they're going to fucking do it everywhere. And it's wrong. I won't tip them. Uber must pay them more. That's how it works. Oh, your coffee's going to get more. Yeah, okay. They're delivering it. All right, how about this? Uber Eats drivers can charge their own cleaning fee. And if you don't pay it, they'll fucking tip it out on your porch (laughs) instead of deliver it. Um, Yeah, you're wrong, dude. Uber Eats drivers, of course they deserve respect. Why would you disrespect your Uber Eats driver? Like, that's the most unnecessary service ever. And you're going to go, yeah, thanks for my chips. (laughs) Fuck you. Get a real job. You know how I know the economy's bad? You know, I know there's a recession coming. The other day, a white girl called Jessica delivered my food. It's bad. It's getting bad. Actually, the other day I ordered Pizza Hut Mm. and I lived near a Pizza Hut, like 100 meters away from one. Mm. And the the guy called me and was like, hey, I'm I'm here. I just can't find your house. Yeah. He'd parked in my driveway. (laughs) He was like, I don't, I can't see your house because we didn't have the front lights. I've been to your house. Yeah. He's, yeah, wrong. Yeah, and I, I was like, I was like, where are you? He's like, I'm at the, I, I don't know. I don't know where I am. At. And then when I turned the lights on and I was like, hey, I'm here. What was his name? Like Mark or Jim? Just some white guy? No. Oh, well, the economy's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, but but then he'd parked in our driveway. I was like, how did you not find the house, you fucking moron? I gave you said my, that to him. I gave him a thumbs down. And then did you, then did you like kick him in the chest as, <laughs> as he was like, you take the bag and then as he turns around, you kick him down the steps. Thanks for doing me a favor. That's what, head. that's what this, whatever this guy would want you to do. Uber yeah. Eats drivers deserve to be Sparta kicked <laughs> on the way down your porch. Like if your, if your Uber Eats driver leaves your house and his knees aren't skinned, you've done a bad job. <laughs> um, But yeah, that, that, that's a real, I reckon that's, I, I think that's actually the two, there's the two biggest hallmark of a recession inbound is empty strip club and mm. uh, white fathers doing Uber Eats. Those two things combined, you're going to have to sell your house because there's a crash coming. Um, and then another one that I just disagree with, food staff at Macca's. How do you fuck up a burger and what's with the half-filled fries of a large fry size? Hey, man, you're at McDonald's and they're 16. You get what you pay for. Now, you really disagree yeah, because but- you're such a fucking loser when you go to McDonald's. <laughs> oh, why? What's with the presentation of my McDonald's? You're at McDonald's. But I worked there. Yeah. And I worked at... Red Rooster, I've worked at fast food. Okay, Red Rooster, you drove the delivery car with the handbrake (laughs) on because you thought the noise that the car made was funny. (laughs) All right? So don't, but but I never fuck with the chips. Just the delivery vehicle. One time my manager said, yeah, you can have a couple. (laughs) And I... (laughs) (laughs) All right, that's the end of the episode.
episode five.